Hello, this is Dr. Kat Fleece from Central New Mexico Community College. In video H on the blood vessels, we're going to focus especially on how resistance impacts blood pressure. There are quite a few ways in which the resistance that our blood experiences in our blood vessels uh, can be impacted. And let's first of all take a look at compliance. We've mentioned compliance before. It's especially a term that relates to the veins in the sense that they are the most compliant. Veins distend very easily. They have a thin wall that's not very muscular. It's not very rich in elastic fibers. So they distend very easily. They give way to the amount and uh, amount of blood and pressure of blood um, present. They're not very elastic, however. Arteries are both compliant as well as elastic. Now you can imagine that if a vessel is very compliant, meaning it can really distend well, it's not going to squeeze onto the blood as it distends and therefore um, vessels that are compliant are going to have much less resistance. Now there are things that can impact the compliance or the level at the level of ease with which vessels can distend. So atherosclerosis is an example of a disease that can impact compliance. And without going into the details of how one forms or develops, I should say, atherosclerosis and the different forms of atherosclerosis, let's just say that some form of plaque builds up inside of the wall of our blood vessel. So this is inside of the wall of the vessel. And that makes the wall much stiffer, meaning that it cannot distend as well. And consequently, we have a decreased compliance. So walls of vessels with plaque are going to have less compliance, and that's going to, of course, affect blood pressure. At the same time, with the, if a plaque is starting to grow bigger and bigger, it's definitely going to possibly also uh, narrow the diam diameter of our vessel and that in turn impacts resistance as well as we'll see here in the next video. Finally, another comment to make is when we have something such as this plaque buildup protruding into the lumen of our blood vessel, we're not going to have a very smooth surface anymore along which the blood can flow. And that's going to disturb the laminar, that smooth flow, that laminar flow of the blood. And we create turbulence. It's analogous to um, a river, for instance, a riverbed that has very smooth banks. And there aren't any rocks and huge tree branches stuck in the river that water is going to flow very smoothly, has very good laminar flow. On the other hand, any protrusions, any buildup of the bank, any big rocks and trees, trees branches, they're going to disturb that laminar flow and create turbulence. Another way in which resistance can change is due to an increase or decrease in the viscosity of our blood. Now remember, it is the, the number of red blood cells in particular, and small, uh, to some extent, the amount of protein as well, but especially the amount of red blood cells that can contribute to our um, uh, viscosity. So more red blood cells, which athletes who abuse red blood cells by means of blood doping um, do, are going to increase viscosity, which will increase resistance and therefore blood pressure. Severe dehydration, by the way, to where your ratio of plasma to red blood cells starts to change drastically, 
can also increase viscosity and blood pressure. The primary factor that impacts resistance and therefore blood pressure is vessel diameter. And the diameter of a vessel can easily be changed by vasoconstriction and vasodilation typically. Uh, there are other things that can impact the diameter. But let's take a look at how important vessel diameter is. The larger the diameter is of a vessel, the larger the lumen is, the less friction there is, the less rubbing of the blood up against the blood vessel walls, and consequently our, our resistance goes down, and based on the formula, our blood pressure is going to go down. Also, we're going to see that the smoother, the better the laminar flow is, the more streamlined the flow is, um, the better, the, the lower our blood pressure is going to be because we have less peripheral resistance. In the case of atherosclerosis, which is analogous to having big rocks and trunks, tree trunks in our stream, we're going to have much more turbulence, much more resistance and therefore a higher blood pressure. But let's take a look at how significant a change in diameter can, um, how significant that is in relation to resistance and therefore, of course, blood pressure. So here we're looking at the diameter of a blood vessel. And per definition or per formula, I should say the peripheral resistance is equal to 1 over the radius of our blood vessel or diameter to the fourth, so cubed essentially. In other words, if this is our vessel, of course this would be the diameter and half of the diameter is the radius. So let's say that our radius is one millimeter, then we're going to see that the peripheral resistance, and again, remember peripheral resistance is sometimes just abbreviated with the R, is going to be one divided by one to the fourth. And of course, any, a, a one to any exponent is still equal to one. And so that results in one. On the other hand, let's say now that our radius was half that size. And let's say it was half a millimeter then we're going to see that we need to divide 1 divided by 1 half to the fourth. And if we work this out, this would be 1 divided by 1 divided by 2 times 2 times 2, which is 16. And of course, if we have 1 divided by 1 16th, that equals 16. So what is the point I'm trying to make? The point I'm trying to make is that if we go from a vessel that is one millimeter to a vessel that is half the same, this, that radius, we see a huge difference in peripheral resistance we go to a per peripheral resistance level from 1 to 16. That's pretty enormous. So changing the diameter of vessels by means of, for instance, vasoconstriction or vasodilation can have a huge impact on our uh, blood pressure, particularly our systemic blood pressure. By the way, notice that the highest resistant occur, resistance occurs in our small arterioles. They are the ones with the small enough lumen to where they create a lot of friction and therefore peripheral resistance. So to apply this to what we've been learning, they can really impact blood pressure in the body. Not just the diameter of a vessel, can impact resistance and therefore blood pressure. As you can imagine, the longer vessels are, the longer the blood is going to experience friction and that could also impact blood pressure. Consequently, when a person increases um, weight or gains weight, I should say, 
the addition of all those cells is going to require more blood vessels or even longer blood vessels. And so that increase in weight is going to have an effect on blood vessel length, which in turn has an effect on resistance. And therefore, typically we see in people with um, a high body weight with hypertension. Just as a little piece of interesting information, supposedly for each additional pound of fat tissue that we add, we add yet another mile of blood vessels. We have about 60,000 miles of blood vessels, of course, on average, which is about 100,000 kilometers if I calculate this quickly in my head. So in summary then, resistance can be impacted by several factors. We looked at compliance, viscosity, the diameter of blood vessels, and finally blood vessel length.